I think the reason everybody's getting so crabby is because they're personalizing everything. Everybody's taking everything so personal. In fact, I was out in St. George, Utah, where I was uh, speaking to the State Department of Education Nutrition Division. <laughs> it, it was the public school cooks. They did not get a raise that year, they got a title. <laughs> and me. <laughs> so they were very open. But I always try to find, you know, some reason to bond with the, the people I'm out speaking to, so uh, we found our bond pretty quick because they cook and I eat, so we found our common ground. <laughs> Anyway, I got along well with them, and they had dropped me off at the airport to fly home. And if any of you have ever been to St. George, Utah, it's a very small airport. In fact, the entire airport building is smaller than this theater. And there's only one plane that flies in and out, and it's got 18 seats on it. And the pilot is 12 years old. <laughs> and you really want things to go well, because the, the airport sits up on a mesa. So that means at the end of the runway, there is no land. <laughs> so you need to get the wind beneath your wings. So we have, they have dropped me off at the airport to fly, and uh, we are uh, all there waiting to fly. And it was snowing, and the snow turned into a blizzard, so our flight was delayed. And all of us were sitting there reading or you know, talking on our cell phones or whatever people do when the flight is delayed, except for one person who was at the counter, screaming at the women behind the counter. And this is what she was saying. Usually it's United that abuses me. And sometimes American takes advantage of me. But this is the first time Delta has ever been out to get me. <laughs> now the rest of us are all looking at the snow thinking, what did that woman do? See the clouds, right? But see, when I see that kind of craviness happening, I don't see it as a problem. I don't, I don't even see it as a challenge. I see it as an opportunity. <laughs> an opportunity to stop crabbiness in its tracks. So of course, when I saw how angry that woman was, I thought to myself, wow, what an opportunity. <laughs> so I went up to the counter under the guise of checking to see if I was gonna make my connection. And my walking up there stopped her from yelling at those women. And I said to her, ma'am, I couldn't help but overhear what you were saying. I said, in fact, we all couldn't help but overhear what you're saying. <laughs> and I said, I think to say that Delta is out to get you is unfair. I said, there are 17 other people on the flight if Delta was out to get anybody, it would be all of us, I said. I don't think you can own that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> and you know, my goal in life is to lighten people up. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I, I lit her up. <laughs> She's now emotionally charged and her arms are flailing. She has her cell phone in her left hand. It goes flying out of her left hand. It hits me on the head and drops to the counter. I said, I think it's okay. I think my head broke its fall. <laughs> now the Delta women had been very professional until this point, but now their little lips are <laughs> quivering. <laughs> and the woman felt terrible about hitting me with her cell phone. So uh, she apologized profusely. And she ended her apology by saying, I guess I'm just not the brightest crayon in the box. And I didn't know what to say to that. So I just nodded my head. <laughs> And the Delta women couldn't take it anymore, so they ducked behind the fake wall. <laughs> and you heard this, ah, going on back there. So now I'm alone with the crabby woman. She's looking at me, I'm looking at her, we're looking at the wall. She said, I know it sounds real corny that I use that old saying, but we say it all the time where I work. And I said, really, where do you work? And she said, Crayola. <laughs> And I said, well, listen, when you're checking the color on your crayon, I said, you might want to check the sharpener on the back of the box. It seems to be a little pointed. Well, at that point, the wall almost fell over. Anyway, I'm still friends with that woman today. But we have this thing going where we send emails back and forth when we're out traveling and things get stressful. She was on a plane that had been canceled and uh, they all had to get in line to schedule onto other planes. There was a technical problem on their plane. And while they're standing in line uh, to check with the clerk, there was a man that came from the back of the line to the front of the line and, and went right up to the clerk and said, you need to rebook me right now. And the clerk looked at him and said, sir, you're gonna have to wait in line like everyone else. And the gentleman said to him, said to her, do you know who I am? <laughs> and she said that the clerk looked at him for a minute and then picked up the telephone, dialed the intercom number, and said, we have a gentleman at gate 14 who doesn't know who he is. 
Now that's good humor. <laughs> <laughs>